Do you have a security system in your house? If so, how do you turn it off and on? In this episode of the I Can't See You podcast, I'll talk about a new security system we're looking to buy for our house, and I'll give you an update on White Canes Connect. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there, and welcome to episode 132 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really appreciate you joining me for today's episode, and I've got a few things to talk about. I'll get to the security system and the White Canes Connect update in a second, but just a couple of other shorter updates. Uh, I had mentioned a week or two ago in an episode about BJ's and their customer service, and I forgot to give an update last week. We had gone back and forth, if you listen to that episode, uh, because of our problem with one of the chairs in a dining set, an outdoor dining set that we bought for our patio. They asked us to do some things, send some pictures. We did that twice. Never responded. Then they finally responded to the second email uh, that we sent in with the images. The one lady finally swore to us after probably about half a dozen calls, swore to us, I'll get back to you within 72 hours. We never heard from her again. In fact, we then took, Liz put the defective chair into the car, took it over to the local store, which is a very short distance from here, maybe seven to 10 minute drive, and said, hey, I've got this defective chair. Can you just replace it? We just, we like the set. We want to keep it. Can you replace it? Oh, I can't break up a set, said Francis. And my wife said to him, but, you know, we can't, nothing's happening. We can't fix this. So are you saying we have to either return the whole thing? And he said, you know, you have to, you have to talk to customer service about that. So Liz came home and we fought the charge. So instead of getting the chair fixed, we now have five chairs and a table, and we fought the charge for just under $1,300, hoping that that will spur them to just send us a new chair. So far, nothing. So it's, it's, been, about, uh, it's been about a week or 10 days since that's happened. It is just unreal. And over and over again, we see when we go into stores or we call on the phones, customer service is just unbelievably terrible these days. I don't know if it's because people just don't care or if they know that if they quit that job because they get fired, they can just move on to another one. And it's, it's just unreal. It's just unreal. We were, we were at a supermarket yesterday uh, in this area. Acme is a fairly large chain. And um, just picking up a couple of things, um, you know, uh, we were at Home Depot nearby, so we went in and grabbed a couple of things. <laughs> and Liz gets a receipt out of the self-checkout thing, and there's nothing on it. It's completely blank. And so she takes it over to the customer service desk, and the guy says, oh, my gosh, Danny put new things in there, and he really messed up. He put it in backwards. Uh, you know, I guess it's thermal paper, and, and that's why it came out the way it did. So, you know, fortunately, we didn't buy anything significant that would warrant a return, I don't think. Um, you know, but we have no proof that we were there other than the charge uh, that we made that day and the time of the charge, I guess they could go back and look. But it, it's just unreal. And, um, you know, Danny doesn't care because Danny knows if he, <laughs> if they say, hey, you messed up too many times, we have to let you go, he can go to the Home Depot and do the same thing or go to, you know, another store and do the same thing. Just unreal. Um, you know, and I don't know what the, I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, you know, I, I don't know how friendly robots are, but, you know, I know Marty at the giant supermarket, he's not, he's not very talkative and just kind of rolls around the store. <laughs> so, so, and, and finding, finding spills, who knows, maybe he's even creating them. Uh, so another update that I wanted to talk about, and I know I, I briefly mentioned this, uh, when I was talking about Jane and her new job, um, Jacob did get a new job, and he, it, it's funny, he, a few years ago, he took a test, a civil service test, um, to work at, in, in Pennsylvania, it's an antiquated state with antiquated liquor laws, that the state is the one who sells all the booze. Now, in the last couple of years, 
beer and wine have been made available at supermarkets and convenience stores and things like that. But for the most part, if you want, if you're making margaritas at your barbecue, you got to go to, um, they're called uh, fine wine and good spirits. At least they're, they're, they've, they've at least branded them something that is somewhat, somewhat better than what it used to be. And, um, uh, you know, they used to be very plain stores. They are nice looking now. Um, you know, so uh, controlled by the state. And so Jacob took this test because he, you know, was thinking about, you know, trying to get a job at one of the liquor stores before, I don't, I don't remember if it was before Target or something even, even before that. Uh, and he realized, hey, you know, now that I'm out of Target, maybe I should try for the liquor store. There's one opening uh, that would be, you know, just a short bus ride away uh, in Springfield. And, you know, maybe he can get into that store. And so, uh, you know, he made some inquiries and boom, he got a job. But it's not at that one because that one's not open. He's hoping that he'll be able to move to that one. He is going to be starting off. In fact, today is his first day at the actual store in media, um, which is a bus and trolley ride away. So, you know, that's, that's going to be, you know, that's not ideal because it's, you know, you're paying, you know, you're paying for uh, $5 each way to get there. Um you know, but hopefully, like I said, he'll be able to get into the store that's opening in Springfield. We'll see how that goes. But congrats to him. Uh, he's excited and uh, looking forward to this. He, st he actually started yesterday. They had training in an office building uh, in Philadelphia. So, uh, so far, so good there. I don't know if he gets any free samples. I, I'm not, uh, you know, for those of you who know me, you know this. But for those of you who don't, I do not drink a lot. Um, and it's very rare. It's very rare. Um, you know, and since my mom has died, um, <laughs> this is going to come out wrong. <laughs> since my mom has died, I don't know that I've had anything to drink. <laughs> and it's not because of that. But when she would, when we would take her out, <laughs> when we would take her out, you know, for dinner, she would always get a, a glass of white Zinfandel and never finish it and say, come on, just finish it. It's okay. You know, it's not a lot. I, I just don't want to finish it. I've already had enough. And I would drink it. You know, unless if Jacob or Jane were there, sometimes they would finish it and I'd be off the hook. But, you know, I rarely drink. So I don't know. You know, Jane gets a lot of free samples in her, um, you know, in her job. Um, so, uh, you know, I wonder if, if there are any things like that, any kind of perks like that with uh, <laughs> with the liquor store. So I'll, I'll keep you uh, I'll keep you up to date on that. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe if there is, you'll notice I, I've had a few before I've pressed record. So there are two main things that I wanted to talk about um, today's on today's episode, and I'll start off with an update. I, I know a few weeks ago I had mentioned White Canes Connect, and that's a, a podcast. Well, it's not a podcast yet. It's Right now it's just an audio file, um, and it's finally been posted, and I will put a link in the show notes. I didn't put a link in the previous show notes because I had mentioned it, and then it hadn't been published for two weeks. It just went up last week. So um, right now it resides on the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania's website, which is nfbp.org. And, um, and it's there. And it's, you know, I think the episode came out pretty good. I mean, you know, they're just like when I started this, this wasn't great when I started. I mean, you know, some of you may think it's still not great, but you still listen. <laughs> Except for that one person who gave me one star. Um and uh, so it's up and out there, and I like the way that I put it together. In fact, I'm going to use some of the things that I did in that into this podcast in the coming weeks. I actually wanted to do it for today, um, but I j just limited time. I just, I just didn't have time to edit some audio to do it. So maybe next week's show. Uh, and if you listen to that, uh, you'll, you'll hear what I mean. And... It, I don't know that the listeners for that cross over to the listeners for this. You know, that show is specifically for blind folks and not quite as specifically, but for blind folks in Pennsylvania uh, and, and the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania, just basically updating things that are going on with the different chapters and talking to different members and things like that. And, um, I do like the way it came off and, you know, we did get feedback, you know, which 
we always ask for, and, and just like I ask for here, uh, we did get an email from someone, and um, uh, her name is Karen, and you know she had an issue with the audio, uh, specifically Lisa's audio. And, and we knew, you know, Lisa was having some trouble with her audio and she since, and we've got her all set up with her, you know, she ha she's going to be using the same, the same setup I have been using since I started this podcast, which is a Sennheiser um, headset, which when I, when I first started, I think they were around 40 bucks. They're now down to like 25 bucks or 24 bucks. So if you want to start a podcast, I mean, that's all you really need. If you have a Mac, you can use GarageBand. If you have... Um, a Windows machine. Um, there's something called, I believe it's called Audacity. I, you know, I didn't write it down and, and think about it. I, I was talking to another friend who uh, wants to start a podcast and she's on a Windows machine because a lot of blind folks, when they're trained to use a screen reader, they use something called JAWS and JAWS is a Windows thing. Uh, it's, it doesn't come with Windows. It's, you know, you have to buy it separately. Um, so, you know, so Lisa's audio was, you know, sometimes it was a little better than others, um, but it was no worse than if you think back, especially to the beginning of the pandemic, when you would see the person doing the weather or the sports from their house and it would sound horrible, you know, and I always complained about that to, you know, whoever I was watching the news with. Usually it was Jane because Liz was usually sleeping at this point and Jacob never watches the news. So, you know, if any place, a TV station has to have all sorts of microphones and all sorts of other equipment, how they could let someone on the air and sound like they're talking through a tunnel or a tin can... And it's, it was just mind boggling to me. And it did get better, obviously, as the, as the people did stay at home and they got things together. Uh, although there were still a couple that I watched on a regular basis that for, for whatever reason still sounded pretty bad. So we knew Lisa's, Lisa's sound was, was not great. We knew that, but we fixed it. Um, I, I should say she fixed it because, you know, she bought, she bought the headset. Um, and um, the other problem that, that Karen had, and again, not as easy to work on, um, is it's not, as I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, it's not technically a podcast yet. Right now, it's just an MP3 file on nfbp.org slash white canes connect. And the only place you can go and listen to it or get it is to nfbp.org slash white canes connect. You can download that file and then listen in iTunes if you use iTunes on your computer or your phone. Um, and when you do that, when you do download it, you can control it just like you control an MP, a, a, an MP3 or a podcast. You could listen at, you know, a higher rate, higher speed. Um, and, you know, so it's the same. It's just that when a new episode drops, you got to go to that page, nfbp.org slash white canes connect to get it for now. I'm going to put it up somewhere. I'm going to put it, you know, try to get into Apple podcast. When I launched this, it was always recommended to me to launch with a few episodes because that's how you get a higher rating and you get more prominently displayed within Apple podcast. At the time it was iTunes. So I've kind of, I, I haven't been slow to put it up or try to get it on there. And, it, and even once you do get everything going, it does take a couple of weeks. Um, so I haven't been slow on doing it. I've just been, you know, waiting to see because to host the podcast somewhere, you can't just put it up on any, any web server. You have to have a podcast host. And then it creates the RSS feed and all that stuff. So, you know, that costs money. And because, because it's Lisa and I, I knew if we were going to do that, I would, because I was going to be the one setting it up, I was going to be the one to pay the $15 a month. And so 
I hesitated to go back to Lynn, who is, Lynn Heights is the president of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania, and say, hey, look, thanks for letting us, you know, do this show in association with the NFB of PA, but, you know, now we need $15 a month. And I just, I didn't want to do that. You know, the, the, the organization, you know, yeah, I wanted to find a way to pay for it before I go to her and say, hey, I want to do this you know, put it, you know, put it somewhere. And we talked about it, you know, in our, in our talks before we launched. And even in our talk, when we interviewed her, um, in the first episode. So, um, she kind of had an idea that at some point that was going to happen because, and, and again, you know, you can't just keep putting audio files up on your website, uh, a specific website, because that's going to, you're going to run out of space. So, you know, you know, we're thinking about this, and especially after the uh, the email from Karen, and, and again, you know, we appreciate, you know, just like with this show, I appreciate any feedback, um, and I did appreciate it, and I did explain to her that she can control by going to the website and and then downloading the file from the website. She can control it just like an MP3, and I told her all the things that she could do. Um, so hopefully, she was appreciative of that. So the, the, it's up there, and um, it's been up there, like I said, maybe 10 days now. It, was, it went up someday, someday last week, and I'm recording this on July 1st. I'll get to something that's happening today in a sec. Um, July 1st, um, dropping July 1st this episode, and we're going to have another episode come out sometime in July. We hoped to have had it come out earlier in July, we were shooting for the first Monday of each month. Um, Monday being the fifth, it's not going to happen because we haven't recorded any bits of any part of it. And one of the issues that I've had with, and, and it's kind of foreign to me, and I kind of alluded to this back when I was the president of the condo board over in Briarcliff, and that's a whole other story that you know maybe I'll talk about next week. Um, is I'm not used to having to go to someone and say, hey, I want to do this, or I need to do this. How do I do this? Can, can we do this? You know, I've owned my own businesses and this podcast, it, I control it. So if I want to do something, I just do it. And same thing with business. If I, if I see that, hey, this is trending, I should do this, then I do it. I don't say to someone, hey, um, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Now, with any business, obviously, you know, I might say to Liz in this case, you know, but in the video store case, when I own that, I might say to a manager or to, hey, you know, look at this. Look, these things are, are really trending. What do you think? I'm, I'm thinking about bringing these in. What do you think? You know, when I did CDs or when I did DVDs, you know, way back then. Uh, actually, even before the DVDs, and, and DVDs were just starting to really hit um, the big time when we closed. Um, but before that were laser discs, you know, and um, I talked to other store owners and say, hey, what are you thinking, um, you know, about them and so forth and so on. So, but for the most part, I was the one, I made the call. I thought, hey, it looks good. Maybe I'd run it by people. Maybe I'd ask people, maybe talk to distributors. And then I would make up my mind and do it. And with this podcast, soon to be podcast, right now, again, just an MP3, um, it's not that way. And here's what I'm, here's what I'm going towards because it's all going to tie together when I say this next thing. I've had, as I've mentioned, this is episode 132 of the I Can't See You podcast. No time in the, the previous 131 episodes and up until today, has anybody reached out to me and said, hey, I'm interested in a sponsorship of your show? Never. I've always used the affiliate marketing for a Amazon. And again, to help me out and you want to go to Amazon and buy something, I can't see you.com slash Amazon. That'll take you to the Amazon homepage. Go and buy something. I get a little commission. Again, usually between 3 and 8%. Um, you buy luxury beauty, it's 10%. Um, or I use the 
uh, Keystone Chapters White Cane Coffee affiliate information, like I was doing, you know, for, you know, about six weeks, you know, in May, April and May. Um, so no time have I had anyone say, hey, you know what, I'd be interested in, you know, three episodes or having, you know, if I come on, you know, can you, you know, well, here's what I could do for you. <laughs> Nothing. That episode isn't on any podcast directory. That episode one of White Canes Connect, we've already had someone reach out and want to work out some sort of sponsorship. There are a, a healthcare home healthcare company, and um, <laughs> it's just it just cracks me up. So I don't want to talk numbers, but you know anything that we do, and I, I kind of think the way it will be set up is you know it basically is a donation to the NFB of Pennsylvania, you know, but that donation would then pay for the you know the web hosting. I'm sorry, the the podcast hosting um, for each episode, and you know, um, hopefully some other things if we need them down the line. Um, you know, I wear shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> when I record. Usually, um, unless it's winter, then I wear jeans and a t-shirt, or sometimes a flannel. Um, hopefully, hopefully, once it gets cool again, it'll be a jeans and a. Uh, I can't see you branded uh, uh, hoodie, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> so, so with um, with White Canes Connect, you know, um, I don't I don't know what Lisa wears during it, and it, you know we haven't videoed it, and I, I don't know that either of us are, <laughs> are interested in in using video with it. Again, you know, we can't see, so why would we put video on to you know, an audio, you know, an audio show. Um, again, you know, yeah, maybe we get more viewers, more listeners, whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I always think back to um, being in Chicago when we walked past the Drake Hotel and Alex would always say, you know, guests of the Phil Donahue show. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, the, the shows when they say so-and-so's wardrobe provided by... Um, you know, today my wardrobe is provided by uh, Eddie Bauer on the shorts, and uh, my T-shirt is from a from a company that may or may not still exist that I got as a freebie at um, Podcast Movement when it was in Philadelphia in 2018. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and I don't even I'm not even sure what the name of the the uh, the company is. I just like it. It's very comfortable. It's a heavy duty shirt T-shirt and. Uh, I was told by more than one person, when you get merch um, and you're giving it out, if you give a higher quality shirt, people will wear it more, and then other people will see your company's information more. And uh, I absolutely believe that. Um, so I don't know what else besides the podcast hosting, you know, expense-wise, what we'll need. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's much else. We'll see. So, so anything that we make above that, again, would be great for the... NFB of Pennsylvania. But because it's going through that, I didn't want to just reach back out to the person. I contacted Lynn, again, the president of the NFB of PA. And I said, you know, what are the guidelines? What do I have to do? And she said, just remember, you're representing the NFB of Pennsylvania and things have to go that way. So again, it's not, it's not the same. You know, if, it, if somebody you know, sent me, <laughs> sent me an email and said, hey, we'd love to sponsor the I Can't See You podcast. I would reach back out to them and say, okay, what, what are your thoughts? And we'd come together and we'd make a, make a, you know, make a deal and be done. Um, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. But I'm excited by that. And uh, I'm excited because, <laughs> because now I won't have to pay the $15, hopefully, for the, um, you know, for the podcast hosting. Um, because I wouldn't ask to get reimbursed for that because, yeah, again, it's, um, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to cost the, <laughs> I don't want to cost the state affiliate money. I want to, you know, make it a better thing. So <laughs> I'll keep you updated on how that goes. And, um, I don't know if it's something that would work on this show to bring them on. Uh, again, I don't think they'd be interested. I, I don't know that the, the, 
listeners are there. You know, that's one thing with White Canes Connect. There's a built-in audience of a couple hundred people that are members of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania, you know, from one affiliate to another, I'm sorry, from one chapter to another. But in, a, in general, I, I think it's about 200 members in Pennsylvania. It might be more. I, I could be wrong. And I've, I've reached out to Lynn to get a number. So when I do talk to the company, uh, I have a better idea of, uh, of, what, of what it is. So I mentioned today is July 1st, and uh, I'll just touch on this. Um, you know, I said to Liz today, um, today uh, is her Aunt Irene's birthday. Now, Aunt Irene died, I don't know, five years ago, 10 years ago. I, I don't remember. I was at the funeral and everything. And she was never married. She has, as far as family goes, she has um, Liz and her sisters, and she has... Um, Obviously, Liz's mom, and you know my kids and Margaret's kids and Suzanne's kids, and then in New York, um, Liz's other aunt, who is Liz's mother's twin, um, you know her kids and and you know the aunt. Well, they're not coming down, you know, and and I I was thinking about it over the last day or two, and I'm thinking how sad. There's nobody here, you know, to you know go visit her grave. So I said to Liz you know, today, you know, we should go visit her grave for her birthday. You know, again, it's not a long term, you know, you walk, you know, we go drive over again. It's not far from here. Stop the car, get out. Ziggy will most likely be with us, you know, say happy birthday to the grassy area where we think she's under and, and move on. And, you know, was she Liz's favorite aunt? I don't think so. I don't think she was anybody's favorite aunt. She was, you know, she was a little rough and, you know, could be rough <laughs> towards you. But there's nobody to, to remember her, you know, and go and visit her grave. And I, I just thought that, boy, that's pretty sad. Uh, and she was, she was always uh, good to us. You know, there was a time that we needed some help and she helped out. Uh, but again, she was, um, you know, she was kind of, I guess, that old school, you know, not, not too different from my mom or... <laughs> A couple of my friends' moms, um, you know, although she was never a mother. Um, so uh, so we'll be doing that at some point today, hopefully in between the storms that are coming. So lastly for today, um, one of the things that we wanted, even before we had Ziggy, we wanted to get an alarm system in our house. Now, you know, when we have Ziggy, um, you know, they see a dog, especially him, who is so rambunctious, and um, he doesn't bark much, although he's barking more now. We were out on a walk the other day, and he barked at a dog uh, a few times, actually, and it looked like they really wanted to play because the other dog was only nine months, and it was a, it looked like a black lab, but the guy who was walking it said he's got like eight million different things in him, so, but he looked like a black lab. He was a good-looking dog, and his name was Brody, and it just looked like Ziggy and him were going to have a great time. They were both wagging their tails as they were trying to nip at each other and lunge at each other, and um, it just looked looked like they would have a ball if they weren't on leashes and, you know, having us hold them back um, and, you know, untangle from each other and from us. So we've wanted to get an alarm, but, you know, with COVID, as I previously mentioned more than a dozen times, we haven't wanted to have people come in. The only reason we had the basement finished we, and, and we were here was because the guy took too long. You know, he was supposed to be done before we moved in. So, um, you know, now that things are starting to come around and we're starting, you know, we ate, I told you, in our you know, an actual restaurant in New York, um, inside, um, you know, we're starting to think, you know, hey, now we, we want to get an alarm system. We want to get, you know, have an electrician come and do some things we need to have done, stuff like that. So the alarm system was, was top on the list. Um, so we've contacted a few places. We contacted the place we last used when we had an alarm system at our house in media, and he came out and gave us a price and, you know, went over everything. And he's telling us about the, the control panel, which, you know, when we first got an alarm when I was a kid, uh, I want to say it was the late 70s. 
And of course, it basically looked like it looked like a touch tone telephone pad that sat on the wall and had a little speaker. So it would beep when you were punching the numbers in. Very easy to operate, very tactile, perfect. You know, obviously, it, everything back then was wired. Then I moved out later in the 80s. And in my townhouse, I had a similar similar system. They had to come and they had to drill holes for, you know, to run the leads to all the windows and all the doors and the motion detectors and the keypad was, you know, again, pretty similar. Moved to media, same thing. Ran the wires, all that sort of thing. And, and while we were in media, the company that we used, it was called My Alarm Center or something like that. Um, they you know, they were phasing out their use of landline phones, and that was always a big fear, you know, just like you see in the movies, they, you know, the, the bad guys would cut the, the, cut the phone line, so even if the alarm went off, you know, the, the monitoring wouldn't get the information because the phone line was cut. Well, now, back then, and this is, you know, we haven't lived in media for five years, um, you know, they switched over to cellular, and so we had to do the switch, and I don't remember how much it was to, to make that switch. Um, but we did that. Now, fast forward. Now, when we were in the condo, we didn't have any kind of alarm system because we were in a building that, you know, had all sorts of monitoring and, you know, video surveillance and whatnot. So now we're here and we need the system. Everything is wireless. The leads that go on the doors and the windows, they're just, you know, they're just held on with, I, I don't know, adhesive, heavy duty adhesive, and they're wireless. They have a battery that lasts about five years, I've been told. And the keypad, depending on the manufacturer, depending on the company, and we've had three different companies come out, they could be as big as like an iPad. But, you know, of course, if it's like an iPad, that means it's just a piece of glass. How am I going to know what buttons to hit and how to shut it off and, and so forth and so on? So we had that guy come out from that from my alarm center or my alarm company, whatever it's called. And then we had a another guy come out who uh, Liz realized as we were looking around for alarm companies, realized there was a Walden parent that had an alarm company, had a security system company. And uh, Walden School um, has, <laughs> has given us some great, some great places to, you know, to buy stuff from. So we figured, okay, we'll have this guy come out. And his name is Jay, and he came out last week. And he, you know, went through everything. And as we're standing in the kitchen, you know, we were talking with him, and, he, you know, we were saying that we both grew up in Wallingford. And, and he's like, oh, so you went to Nether Providence. And I said, well, I went to Nether Providence, but Liz went to Strathaven. And he said, Strathaven? I went to Strathaven. And, uh, you know, he said to Liz, what year? And Liz said, 86. He said, I went to Strathaven and graduated in <laughs> 86. And just so you know, I guess I should backtrack a sec. Nether Providence High School merged with Swarthmore High School back in the 80s and became Strathaven High School because that is the, um, the creek that runs between Wallingford and Swarthmore. And that's why, you know, I... I actually got to pick the name, you know, not me personally, but everybody in, you know, who was in high school at that time, both in Swarthmore and Nether Providence, you know, and that was the one that won. Um, so, um, you know, and, and, you know, Liz is like, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, yeah, I played sports and, and, and Liz is like, oh yeah, you, wait a second. And, you know, and w went over the last name again and said, that's right. You played baseball. You were a pitcher. Um, and he said, yes. And, you know, he said, you know, uh, I said, well, I said, we don't, you know, I, I, I don't know about, you know, Liz, but, you know, other than her gray hair, I guess she still looks the same. And, you know, I certainly don't look the same, you know, bald. I had hair back when I was in high school. At least I had most of it. Um, he said, oh, don't worry. I, you know, I'm probably a hundred pounds heavier. So uh, it was just kind of funny that, you know, I don't know that they had, you know, much contact in high school, but they certainly knew of each other, or at least Liz knew of him because he played on the baseball team. Um, so that was kind of funny. And then we had one, we had one last guy come out who does our former neighbors over in, in Rose Tree Estates, does their house. And so we got, um, Mike and Lisa gave us his name. Weird thing is, he actually lives 
almost right across the street from the Walden School in Media. Um, so he came out and uh, he talked yesterday and we were going back and forth and he was asking, he's like, podcast, what, what do you mean? And, you know, I was explaining it to him. He's a, you know, a little bit older than me or maybe a lot older. I, I, I don't know. You know, I can't see, so I don't know. Um, it seemed like his hair was dark, though. That, that doesn't usually mean a lot, though. <laughs> um, but he had it, so I knew that he had hair. Um, so we were talking, and, um, you know, I was telling him about the podcast, and I was telling him about different things, and, you know, we were talking about, uh, he he was, he had just done a, um, you know, I told him that I, you know, I grew up in the area and, uh, you know, when I first moved out of my parents' house, I moved to Brookhaven. He, oh, I just did a house in Brookhaven. I said, oh, okay. I, I lived in a townhouse. He's like, do you know where the Lowe's is? And Lowe's had just opened, um, within the last year or so. Uh, and I said, yeah, I lived right behind where that Lowe's is in a, in a little townhouse community. He said, yeah, I just did one of those houses. Um, I said, I lived on Kenny Lane. And he said, no, I know I turned on Kenny Lane, but I then turned off. He, and then he goes through his, his notebook or his phone. I don't know what he was looking at. And he said, yeah, Rick's Circle. And I said, yeah, that's, that's the one. Right at the corner of Rick's Circle and Kenny Lane was where the bank of mailboxes were for that whole section of the development. And, um, you know, so then we were talking about the video store because this guy that this house he, he'd done was, uh, had 15,107 DVDs and CDs. So I don't know what that guy's going to do with all that. Um, I guess he still listens, but you know, I know I have more than that in my pocket on my phone as far as music goes. M movies, not so much, but, um, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, at this point for me, um, a CD would be useless because it would take me so long to, f a, find what I'm looking for, um, you know, on a shelf, um, then I, I'd be, I'd probably be able to listen to three or four tracks off of the, off of the album by the time I would be able to find the actual CD if I just pulled it up on my phone or the computer or, you know, the A lady or the G lady or whatever. So I, I thought that was kind of funny, but it, it was kind of funny that, you know, again, small world, but again, same thing. The guy was questioning. He's like, what do you mean you can't see very well? And I said, well, I said, I'm legally blind. You know, he said, but, but you can see enough to do this, that, and the other. I said, well, I can't read. I can't see well enough to read. I can't see well enough to, you know, if I'm out on the street to know where the curbs are and other obstacles are. I used, and I, and I pointed to where my cane was. I said, I have to use the white cane uh, to safely get around. He's like, oh. I said, so tell me the the, the, the um, control panel for the alarm system. And he said, well, yeah, it's, he said, a lot of companies like to use the big thing that looks almost like, looks like an iPad. He said, we use a smaller one, but it's still a touch screen. Um, still a, you know, just a pe basically a piece of glass. He says, no, it will tell you when it's off. And I said, okay, well, that's great. But, you know, if I have to punch in numbers, I needed to say what those numbers are as I'm punching them in or it's useless. And, and of course, if you're doing that and it's, you know, in my, I'm punching in one, two, three, four, five, and that's my alarm code, anybody standing anywhere near now knows my alarm code. So, you know, it just doesn't work. He said, well, you know, we could probably do a key fob. How would you know which button to push, though? I said, well, let me see a key fob. And he showed me one that I, I swear was his car keys. Um, he said, can you feel which one's off and which one's on? And I said, no, because I don't know yet. But um, I do feel that there's, there's something on this button here. So I would know whatever this one is, I would know that it, it's got some dots on it or some sort of um, writing that, that's etched in. Or, um, and he said, oh, OK, so we'll put a key fob down for you. Um, so, so that's been the issue as far as the security service goes. And the other thing that I think is funny with the security is, you know, when we did both the townhouse in Brookhaven that we lived in and our house in media, you paid for all the equipment at the beginning. Um, I don't remember exactly how much it was, but I know it was over $1,000 for the townhouse. And the townhouse, you know, a townhouse is pretty small. You know, maybe maybe 12 windows total and and two doors. So, you know, that's not a lot. And 
um, you know, now for the most part, you pay for the labor of installation, which in this case is probably going to be four or five hundred dollars, and then you pay the monthly fee. But the monthly fee, instead of being twenty or twenty-five dollars as it was <laughs> back then, um, is between thirty-five and forty-five dollars, depending on you know which company we end up going with. So we'll see how that goes. As I'm recording this, I'm waiting on um, the person who went to school with Liz to, he's going to bring over a couple of pads, you know, to see if either any of those work. So most likely we're going to go with him. Um, you know, ballpark, everything, everything between the three of them, we're all in the same ballpark. Um, uh, you know, so we'll see. But it looks like we're going to go with them. Um, just have to verify how they're going to put this stuff in. And uh, what we have to do, what we have to do with uh, with Ziggy when they are installed, how long it'll take to install, on, you know, and then we, you know, if it's a hot day like it's been, we certainly don't want them outside. And and that was the other thing. While the guy was here yesterday, not not Jay, the guy from the other company that that did our old neighbor's house, um, you know, we were talking inside, and Liz took Ziggy out, and you know, it was 97 degrees here yesterday, and, and they were sitting outside for a half an hour, 45 minutes. So that part wasn't good. Uh, I, I guess I could say that part wasn't cool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's all I have. And uh, and I, please, as I've mentioned earlier in the episode, if you have feedback, questions, comments, um, anything, show ideas, uh, please reach out six four six nine two six six three five zero or I Can't See You podcast at gmail.com. Remember, I Can't See You sounds like a whole sentence, but it's only seven characters long. I-C-A-N-T-C-U podcast at gmail.com. Remember, if you do leave a message, please let me know if it's okay to use your voice on an upcoming episode if you have a question uh, or comment. Um, I guess if it's a nasty comment, I guess I'll just put it on anyway, even if you say no. <laughs> so. I mean, it will be fun, and, it, you know, again, a lot of fun. <laughs> and please don't forget to rate and review. Uh, try to get that 4.3 rating up a little bit from those six, <laughs> the six ratings I already have. Uh, again, I really do appreciate listening to the I Can't See You podcast, episode 132. My name is David. Reach out on social media if you want to connect that way. It's at David Benj just about everywhere. Please continue to stay safe. Have a happy 4th of July weekend, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.